Okay. <clears throat> Up until this point in your math experience, it always, has always been a problem if you have a negative underneath the radical. You guys know that the radical is the square root sign, right? Okay. So in this lesson, we're going to learn how to keep solving the problem when we encounter a negative. The first thing we need to do is define the square root of a negative 1 is called an imaginary, uh -oh, an imaginary number or unit. I'm going to have to use my finger there. Yes, your stylus isn't working. Thank you, though. Maybe it's only working with your phone. An imaginary unit is the square root <coughs> of negative 1. In math, we use a lowercase i to represent the imaginary unit. So over here to the right, we're going to say the square root of negative 1 equals lowercase i. So now anytime you see i, it means imaginary number. That means that there's a negative underneath your square root. Okay? A complex number is when you combine any number with an i. That's called a complex number. Any number that can be written in the form a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers and i is an imaginary unit. For example, if I tell you 2 plus 3i, this whole thing is considered a complex number. Because if I knew what i was, I could actually give you a real value. So that whole 2 plus 3i together is called a complex number. Okay? So we need to define what the different values of i are. i by itself, as we talked about, is just the square root of negative 1. Well, if you square the square root of negative 1, what happens to that square root sign? It's just it goes away, right? It's just negative 1. If you cube the square root of negative 1, you get negative square root of negative 1. And if you take it to the fourth power, you just get positive 1. The one that we will deal with the most is the i squared. Any time you see an i squared in your homework or in your problem or whatever, you need to automatically change it to a negative 1. Okay? Anytime you see i squared, you need to change it to a negative 1 in your problem. Any questions about that so far? What an imaginary unit is. All right. So, if we look at some examples here, we've actually already talked about this a little bit. If I ask you to find the square root of negative 81, the first thing that we think is, I can't do the square root of negative 81 because it's a negative sign, right? So we can rewrite this as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 81. I can rewrite this as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 81. Now, i does not appear in your calculator, so you don't really need your calculator. What is the square root of negative 1? What did we just say it was? Nope. 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 I is the square root of negative 1. So this becomes I times the square root of 81. Okay. But what is the square root of uh, 81? Nine. 9. Now we can do the problem, right? Now we can simplify this because I can do just the square root of 81 is 9. And I write it as if I was the variable, and the variable always comes after the number. So I would write it as 9i. So as long as we take the i out, get rid of the negative, then it's business as usual. So let's look at number 2. What might be the first thing we should do on number 2? Pull out the, ne the square root of negative 1, which means I'm pulling out an i, right? So I'm really writing this as i square root of 32. 
And now we practiced yesterday breaking down the square root of 32. What makes 32? What two numbers make 32? 4 and 8. What makes 4? 2 and 2. What makes 8? 4 and 2. And then I can break 4 down again to 2 and 2. How do we put this back together? What are we looking for? Pairs. Pairs. Pairs of two things, right? So I have a group of twos here. I have a group of twos here. For every <laughs> pair, you write it how many times? Once. Once. So for every pair, so I have a pair of twos, another pair of twos. Don't forget about the I. The I is still there, so the I is going to go right here, right next to the square root sign. What's the only thing that's left? Two. This two right here, right? So that's going to go underneath. I can simplify two times two. What is two times two? Four. So this becomes four i square root of two. Four i square root of two. Questions about that one? Yes. If you have a different way of uh, breaking down a radical, that's fine. Yeah. Yes. Hey, with the tree branches, do we just, uh, we don't include the 4 and the 8. Right, we don't include the 4 and the 8 because we broke them apart, right? So that branch no longer is the final branch. We broke them apart. All right, I'd like you to try number 5, please. Jump down and try number 5 for me. So I have one group of twos, so that's going to be written on the outside, 2i, right, because we pulled the i out. And then I have what left underneath the radical? 2 and a 5, so what am I going to do with those numbers? Multiply, great. So 2i square root of 10 is going to be my answer. All right, let's try number 6. Go ahead and try number 6, done the same way. Try number 6. Use your calculator if you need to. Darius, what number is on your binder? On the front page. So that means you're going to be calculated for every day. Do you use your graphing calculator? Why? This for every pair. First step is to take the I out. Colt, what did you say makes 120? 20. 2 and 60. 60. What makes 60? 2 and 30. 2 and 30. Oh, you went by twos. That's fine. What makes 30? 2 and 50. <laughs> okay. And then 15 is 3 and 5. Good. Again, no matter which way you do it, we should be getting the same answer. Okay? So even if you did 3 and... 40, you should be getting the same answer as me. I have one group of twos, so that gets written on the outside with the I. On the inside, I have a 2 and a 3 and a 5, so what do I do with those three numbers? Good. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 5 is 30. 
So this should be 2i radical 30. Does it have to be coming from the same tree? No. Nope, it does not have to come from the same tree to group together. Let me see how you did yours. Yep. But so I got said two. Two. 1 over 10 and 12. Oh, oh you said that's a 12, not a 2. There you go. Okay. Questions on this part of the problem? Any questions with this group, this type? Okay, let's go back to number three now. We're going to treat this as if it was an exponent. So if this was 3x times 2x, what would my answer be? 6x squared, right? So the same concept is true here. If I have 3i times 2i, what does that give me? 6i squared. squared. Is that a finished answer? No. Why not? 6i squared is negative. I squared is always negative 1. So what did I say you do with the I squared? Make it a what? Negative 1. So this is really 6 times negative 1, which is? Negative 6. Negative 6. Now, what about number 4? What do you think number four should be? What should you do first? Make the I squared Excellent. Make the I squared negative one first. Always take care of that first if you can. Good. So this becomes 10 times negative one is negative 10. Negative 10 times negative eight. 80. All right. Now becomes the kind of tricky part, 7 through 9. So if you look back up at the chart, our chart only goes to 4. Do you guys see that? Okay, so because after every 4, the chart repeats. So if I had i, i squared, i cubed, i to the 4th, if I had i to the fifth, it would be the same answer as i to the first. If I had i to the sixth, it would be the same answer as what? I squared. I, whoa. As i squared. Okay? So it repeats itself every four. So the easy way to remember this is you always want to find out what the remainder is when you divide the exponent by four. So here's what I'm asking. If I have i to the 22nd, how many times does 4 go into 22? Five times to be i to the 20th, right? So if I'm 20 times into 22, how many do I have left? Two, Two right? So this is really the same thing as i squared. Okay, so let me say that again. 4 goes into 22 five times with a remainder of 2. And if I have a remainder of 2, that means that this is i squared. Here's another way we can do this. Pull your calculator over. What is 22 divided by 4? 5.5. So if we look at what's remainder, the decimal value, 0.5, how many quarters is 0.5? Like if you have money, you have 50 cents, right, 0.5. That's two quarters, right? So it's i squared. So up at your chart up there, next to i, i squared, i cubed, i to the fourth, off to the side, I'd like you to put the decimal value. If you get 0.25, that's only one quarter. So that means it's just i to the first power. If you get i squared, that's 50 cents. So 0.5. i cubed, how many quarters? Three, which is 75. And then if it goes evenly, if I put a whole number one there, if it goes evenly, it's i to the fourth. Now, back at number seven, we said i squared is really what number? Negative one. Negative one. This is the answer I'm looking for here. You changed it to the right one through four number. It's i squared. And we know that i squared is really negative one. So if I do i to the 47th, you can use your calculator. You're always going to be dividing by 4. 
What's 47 divided by 4, Anthony? 47 divided by 4? Yep. 0.75 is what you're going to look at. So 0.75 is how many quarters left over? 3 quarters. So this is the same thing as I cubed. And I know that I cubed is the negative square root of negative 1. This is what I'm looking for right here. I cubed equals the negative square root of negative 1. Okay, let's do another example. What's 81 divided by 4? In your calculator, Austin, what's 81 divided by 4? 20.25. So what number does this really turn into? Right, it turns into i, right, to the first power, which is the square root of negative 1. What if I gave you this problem? What if I said i to the 208th? i to the 208th. Write that down in your paper. i to the 208th. So in your calculator, you're going to do what? Good, divide 208 by 4. And it becomes a whole number, right? You guys see that? 208 divided by 4 is a whole number. So if it's a whole number, which one is it? I to the 4th, which is 1. Anybody have questions about this part? This part's kind of funky. The I, I to the whatever. If you just look at the decimal value, you're always divided by 4. If you look at the decimal value, you should be pretty good. Okay, let's look at number 10. It says solve the following quadratic equation. How are we going to solve this? Okay, first thing is to set it equal to 0. Go ahead and do that. How do you set it equal to 0? Good, add 1 over. Now, we can try to x factor this. Why two numbers multiply to get 7 and add to get a negative 2? But what's going to happen if I try that? What's the only thing that makes 7, multiplies to get 7? 7 and 1, and I'm never going to be able to add those together to get negative 2. So what's our next mode of attack? Greatest common factor. Is there a GCF between these? Okay, so then what do we try? What? Quadratic. quadratic formula. Do we need to sing it again today? Yes. I have memorized. No. Some of you are in not so great moods. All right, x equals the opposite of b. Write this down on your paper. The opposite of b plus or minus the square root. b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. What's my A value? Seven. What's B value? Two. Negative two. C value? One. One. Remember, we find that from this. This is my A. This is my B. This is my C. If you were absent yesterday, this is what you missed. Okay. Those of you that were here, let's go to town. Let's put everything into our quadratic formula. If you were not here yesterday, I'll work it with you on the board. So we do the opposite of b, which is going to be a positive 2. Do we take the x's with it? Or just nope, just the numbers. Yep, just the numbers. So negative 2 squared minus 4 times my a value times my c. divided by 2 times my a value. Okay, so all I did was just substitute values in there. Yeah, Darius? Okay, so it says the opposite of b. So the formula says the opposite of b right here. And my b value is this negative 2. So what's the opposite of negative 2? Positive 2. Yep, that's where it came from.
So I have 4 minus 28 over 14. What is 4 minus 28? Negative 24. And up until this point, you would say, oh no, can't do anything. But we just learned how to handle a negative underneath the square root. What are we going to do, Crystal? How do we handle a negative underneath the square root? Okay, and now what do we do? How do we take care of that negative underneath the square root? What did we just learn? Look back at your examples. Like example three. What do you do with it? We get rid of the negative sign. Not one. There we go. Okay. So we're going to take care of this negative sign by moving it out and creating an I right there. So now this is 2 plus or minus I square root of 24 over 14. So the only difference between yesterday and today is now we have the I and we take care of it. What are we going to do with the 24, Quentin? Are we going to leave it or are we going to try to break it apart? There you go. Yep. Okay, so let's off to the side. Let's break apart 24. I'm going to use 6 and 4, but you can use something else. We should get the same answer. The twos come outside, and two times three is six. So I know that the square root of 24 turns into two radical six. So I have two plus or minus two i square root of six. Remember the i always goes right next to the square root. Over 14. Holler if you have questions. Yep. The factoring thing? Yeah. Okay. So you did 2 and 12? Yeah. 2 and 6? 2 and 3? Is that what yours looks like? Okay, so we can group a pair of 2s together. And for every pair, remember, you write it one time. And then you have the 2 and the 3 that didn't get used. They go back inside, multiplied together to get 6. Okay? All right, is this finished? Is this problem finished? What do we need to do, James? You still have to add the 2 to the 2i. Okay, I can't really do much more adding because I don't know what the i, st I mean, I know what i stands for, but I can't actually calculate it. What can we do with these three things right here? Reduce. Good. Excellent. Reduce them. Do we ever touch what's inside the radical? No. Never. Okay. So if I divide each of these things by 2, I get 1 plus or minus i square root of 6 over what? 7. Excellent. It is a lot of work. Okay. But you've got it. We did, it. we did it yesterday. The only thing we did today that's different is we pulled an eye out. That's it. No, just trying to teach them. Okay, let's turn the page over. Finish this part right here. Is that the only thing that's left? Yeah, and then this. A few more operations with complex numbers. Okay, so you can add, subtract, multiply, and divide complex numbers. We're not going to divide in this class, okay? But we're going to do the other three operations. We're going to treat the imaginary part like a variable, but remember, i is not necessarily a variable. So on example one, if I asked you to simplify this, if those were x's, if that was 3 plus 5x and 2 minus 4x, what would we be doing? Combining like terms, right? 
Anthony. Wait, now you need to put your phone away. Okay, we're going to combine like terms. So I have 3 plus 2, right? What's 3 plus 2? Okay. Okay, they are separated, but I could rewrite this without any parentheses as, yep, 3 plus 5i plus 2 minus 4i. And it would be the same thing. So 3 plus 2 is 5. What's 5i minus 4i, do you think? 1i. Now, you don't need to put the 1. You can just write i. That's the answer. That's it. That's it. I thought this was going to be a lot of work. That's it. 5 plus i. You can say i plus 5. It's the same thing. It doesn't matter to me. Sorry. I just, I just combined like terms. That's all we did there. Yep. It is the square root of negative. Listen. I squared is negative 1. This is just i, so we're just going to leave it as i. Okay, the only time we change it around is if it's i squared. <coughs> okay, so let's do number two. I'm going to rewrite this for minus 6i. What happens with this negative sign right here? What do we have to do? You distribute it, right? Yep. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just, you know. I know. Okay, so now we can just combine like terms like normal. So I have 4 minus 3 is what? 1. Negative 6i plus 7i is what? Just i, right? And you can write 1i or just i. It's the same thing. Questions so far? That was it. Yep, that was it. Okay, on number three, if this is a multiplication problem, how do you multiply a binomial like that? Foil. Foil. What else? The box. What else? Distribute it, right? So we're going to treat it just like we have been doing. Now, if you're not good with foil or you don't remember how to do this, I'm going to show you the box. Two by two because I have two terms and two terms. So eight, five i, you put your plus sign, two minus three i. So one goes across, one goes down. Two times eight, 16. Two times five i, what is two times five i? 10 i. And then I can do, oops, negative 3i and 8 is what? Negative 24i. Negative 24i. <laughs> and then negative 15 what? I squared. I squared. Okay. So I have a 16. What is negative 24i and a positive 10i? Good. Negative 14i. And then I have minus 15i squared. What do we always do with i squared? Okay, we, may, we change this to be a negative 1. Now, that's 15 times i squared, right? So it's negative 15 times a negative 1 is what? Positive 15. So this becomes a positive 15 right here. Because I had negative 15 times my i squared, and i squared is negative 1. Is this finished? Josh, what else could I do here on number 3? Can I combine anything else? What other like terms are there? Perfect. What's 16 plus 15? Anyone? 31. 31. So I have 31 minus 14i. Okay. 
Okay. You know, when you first look at this, you think it'd be a lot harder. But... Right? That's all math. No, not all of it. Yeah, Darius? <laughs> There's some parts that Hang on, hang on. Shh. What's your question, Anthony? Okay, so I squared changes to negative 1 every time, right? So if I squared changes to negative 1, we're going to multiply negative 15 times negative 1 to get a positive 15. There you go. I'd like you to try number four, please. Yes, Chelsea? I got a little. So if you want to, you can set the box up. Six times six? 36. 36. Whoa. 3i times six? 18i. Negative 3i times six? Negative. And then what is 3i times negative 3i? I feel like that's like a pirate's name. Negative 3i squared. <laughs> so we have three times three, three times negative three. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9, and then i times i okay. would be i squared. Put your i there. Okay, so if I were to write this out, I have 36 plus 18i minus 18i minus 9i squared. What happens here with positive 18i minus 18i? Good. They cancel each other out, so you're left with 36 minus 9i squared, but what did we say about i squared? Excellent. This becomes a negative 1, and we are multiplying, right, because it's negative 9 times negative i, or times i squared, so negative 9 times negative 1 is positive 9. So in this problem, the i goes completely away. And you're left with a whole number of 45. So would we get any points if we left it with an I 36 minus 9I squared? You would get partial credit, yes, okay. but not all the way. All right, what about number 5? What does number 5 mean? Mm -hmm. 9 minus 7I squared. James? Uh, you're going to have to rewrite it. 9 minus 7I in parentheses with another parentheses, 9 minus 7I. Excellent. You have two 9 minus 7 i's, so go ahead and work that one. 9 minus 7 i times. Can we put um, negative 63i and negative 63i together yes. to make, what is that, 126, negative 126i? Yes. That's supposed to be a positive 49i squared. Mm, okay, I would agree with you, yep. A positive 49i squared, I would agree. So negative 63i and negative 63i we said was, what is it? Negative 126i. And then what about this i squared over here? What happens to it? Negative, negative 1. So this really becomes a negative 49. negative 49. What is 81 minus 49? 32. Anybody else agree with positive 32? Now, does it matter if the 32 comes first or the negative 126i comes first? No. Yes. It does not matter when you're adding and subtracting. 
Because it's going to be the same thing if you say 32 minus 126i, it's the same thing. Either one. That's going to be your answer. Now, on number six, the temptation on number six is to begin distributing. If you distribute an 8i squared to a negative 2i, what does that give you? 8i, 16i, what? Yeah, 16i cubed. cubed. It would be ne negative 16i cubed. We do not deal with i cubed. So if you get an i cubed in your answer, besides just like the i to the 50th, whatever, if you get an i cubed in your problem, you've done something wrong. Okay? So let's take care of the i squared first. What does i squared give us really? Negative, negative 1, right? And then negative 1 times 8 gives me a negative 8 times 3 minus 2i. Now I'm going to distribute a negative 8. Okay? So we're getting negative 24 plus 16i. Is that what you guys have? Yes. Yep. Excellent. Miriam, when are we ever going to use this in real life? Well, I'm glad that you asked me. In forensics. All right. <laughs> Maybe not the grocery store. Here you go. Complex numbers are used with electricity. In these problems, J usually represents the imaginary unit. So in 7i, they're just using J, but it's the same thing. The impedance in one part of a series circuit is 7 plus 8J ohms. Ohms is the unit of measurement. This is a physics question. Yeah. And the impedance in another part of the circuit is 13 minus 4J ohms. Even if you have no clue what that means, okay, even if you have no clue what that means, it says add these complex numbers. Mm -hmm. Remember, a complex number is the whole thing together, right? Can you add... 7 plus 8j to 13 minus 4j. Can you add those two things together? Yes. Even if you had no clue what the problem was asking or what it meant, it says add these complex numbers together. So 7 plus 8j plus 13 minus 4j. Can you handle this? Yes. I would hope so. So 7 plus 13, and 8j minus 4j. Okay, because this is Algebra 2 and because this is a word problem, we need to write a complete sentence for our answer. So you would say, if you have trouble writing complete sentences, read what the last sentence says. Find the total impedance. So to write this sentence, I would start the total impedance. in the circuit is 20 plus 4j, period. What is impedance? impedance is a, I think, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I think impedance has to do with the electricity that's moving throughout the circuit. Do you have yeah, to... distribution of current of electricity. There you go. Do you have to there you go, the people. Okay. Um, Elena just asked, do we need to include the unit of measurement? I would say yes, so ohms. 20 plus 4J ohms. Any questions? 